Well, there's a new effort underway to map out a peace plan for Syria, and it comes from a coalition of opposition groups in that country. Now, at the same time, there's political pressure on all sides from behind the scenes, and for more on all of that, we turn to the CBC's Adrian Arsenault. You have two things going on here which are very much at odd with each other. Um, the opposition forces today presenting their blueprint for a political settlement. It is by far the most comprehensive document of its kind anyone has seen. Its demands are very clear that it begins with a six-month ceasefire. That will allow for negotiations. It will also crucially allow for access for humanitarian workers to get food and medicine in that's so badly needed. Then Bashar al-Assad is requested to step down, demanded to step down. Then the opposition forces believe there will be an 18-month transitional government, at which point there should be an election. It is neat and tidy and completely at odds with what is happening behind the scenes. So if you can step, if you can step back a bit, you've got the Germans saying, hey, Russia, please step in here and, and try to broker a deal. You have the Brits saying, Russia, the thing for you to do is to basically back away from Bashar al-Assad. Uh, he must go. You have the Americans and the Russians trying to get together on the weekend. Everyone has now seen that, that photo, which will go down in history as a photo for the ages, of a hard-staring Barack Obama looking at Vladimir Putin, staring equally hard back. Those two gentlemen do not appear to be anywhere close to any sort of agreement on anything. That attempted a ceasefire fell apart over the weekend. The Saudis have been trying to help get them together again, but say it, it's not looking optimistic. And watching all of this, again, those representatives of the opposition forces who are not impressed by anything that they are hearing. We have a clip here for you from Riyadh Hijab. He is the Syrian, basically the High Negotiations Committee coordinator. He has a warning about all this ceasefire talk. Have a listen. He did speak in Arabic, but we've translated it. If what the Russians and the Americans agree upon is very much different from what the Syrians aspire to, then we shall not accept it. It is not possible to accept Bashar al-Assad, not for six months or a day or one minute in this transitional period. The Russians and Americans know this. So again, what you're hearing here is you can talk all you want and you can negotiate a ceasefire that you think will work, but if we don't like it, we're not in. And it's possible this is just some tough talk, a little brinksmanship, but at the end of the day, this is, you know, most definitely another roadblock and the Saudis are warning if this doesn't work, it may be time for Plan B. Plan B is more military intervention. That is not what the Syrians needed to hear. The CPC's Adrian Arsenault in Jerusalem. Now, as we learn more about the peace plan for Syria, we're also getting details about how the conflict there has forced millions of people to flee their homes and their country. In fact, today, a new UNICEF report says nearly half of those people are children. Let's go to Natasha Fata, who's been looking at this report. So, Natasha, what do the numbers say here? Well, they indicate that nearly 50 million children have been uprooted from their homes, been affected by war, by famine, by starvation, and forced to flee. Now, 17 million are internally displaced, meaning that they're still within the country of their birth, but they're not in their homes. And so that is something that needs to be managed. The far more startling number, Michael, is 28 million children from around the world have been forced to become refugees in various locations. Certainly in 2015, we brought you numerous stories about the new uh, the migrant crisis and refugee crisis flooding out of North Africa the Middle East and South Asia into Europe so we've got a further breakdown of those numbers from the United Nations they say of those millions of children that they're are currently taking care of. From 2015, nearly half of them came just from Syria and Afghanistan. So certainly a great deal of focus placed on these two countries. And another troubling figure that they brought out in this report called Uprooted, 100,000 children were traveling alone as migrants and refugees last year. That number has tripled since the number they were dealing with in 2014. Imagine 100,000 children wandering in locations like this by themselves and the reason why this is dangerous of course Michael is that when you are fleeing for your life you're often doing it at night you're doing it at the mercy of strangers human traffickers human smugglers you as a as a child are likely to be kidnapped to be separated from your family there's potential for sexual assault and abuse there is 
potential that you will be sold off. There is potential that you will be sold into slavery, which they've seen a huge uh, resurgence of in the last year. And also, of course, there is the very high probability that you might die during the journey or once you've reached the location you're trying to get to. So these are all kinds of concerns that are being highlighted in the UNICEF report. So obviously very big concerns. What's the recommendation then? Well, first and foremost, when you're focusing specifically on children, the United Nations is saying you need to look at them as children because sometimes when you're dealing with millions and millions of refugees, people get lost. They just turn into numbers and facts and figures. But at the end of the day, you're talking about individual children and what their lives could entail and how dangerous these journeys might be. So we got a sense of that from one of the directors of, at the UN. Let's have a listen. The case that we're making in this report is that regardless of children being refugees or migrants or internally displaced, we should treat them as children. That the experiences that they've been through of violence, of rape, of abuse, of suffering, means that our first response to these children needs to be a humanitarian one. Now, in the uprooted report, they offer a series of recommendations. Now, clearly, they're saying protect these children and end the wars and whatever the crisis might be in their country of birth. But beyond that, if they're making their way across as migrants and refugees, try your best to keep families united. Make sure that children are not being sent to detention centers, as we've seen happen in many places, not just in Europe, but also examples out of Australia as well. They're saying that provide them with decent health care, and don't let them lose out on education, certainly in Syria with an ongoing civil war. We've seen so many children, five, six years of age, never having attended a single class in their lives. So they're saying those are the types of things you do. Make sure you treat them, each of them, as an individual child that needs to be protected. Natasha, thank you for this. You're welcome. Well, the passage across the English Channel for would-be migrants is about to get a lot harder, and that's because Britain is planning to build a large wall in the French port city of Calais. Let's go to London now. Thomas Daigle standing by with more on this story. So, Thomas, what are the details of this project, which I heard has been dubbed the Great Wall of Calais? Yeah, in short, this is going to be a great big wall funded by British taxpayers to keep migrants out of Britain and in France. If that sounds familiar, yes, it does resemble Donald Trump's plan for a wall to keep Mexicans out of the United States. Difference is, Trump's plan is just a plan for now. This plan is actually going to happen. This wall is actually going to be built. It's going to be about a kilometer long. There are going to be two sections along the road leading to the port of Calais. The wall is going to be four meters high. That's 13 feet. Construction expected to begin later this month. The wall expected to be all done by the end of this year at a reported cost of more than $3 million. The goal is to keep migrants living in the, in the camp in Calais, the so-called jungle, away from trucks so they can't hop on and try to cross the English Channel illegally. Truckers say that's a real concern for them. Uh, here's how Brits found out they'd be paying for a wall in Calais. Seems like they almost found out by accident when the immigration minister let it slip in a committee meeting. There are, you know, people who are coming into the country legally in the back of lorries, uh, people smugglers, and we are, you know, well aware of, of the need to step up to the mark on that. We're going to start building this big new wall uh, very soon as part of the 17 million package that we're doing with the French. So, you know, there are people still getting through. It's a fence, not a wall, isn't it? We don't want to confuse that it. We've done the Trump. fence, and now we're doing a wall. Well, what are critics saying about this plan, Thomas? Well, the truckers are the ones, uh, Michael, who've been complaining about the dangers they face when driving through that area, yet the head of a British truckers association who's been speaking to the media here, he says this is a waste of taxpayers' money. He says it will just move the problem an extra kilometer up the road away from the port itself. People who want to get past the wall will still find a way to get around it. Uh, activists who work in the jungle with the th thousands of migrants there say more than $3 million would be better spent helping the migrants rather than keeping them away. Uh, in any case, this will come as a surprise to many people that the Brits are building a wall long before Donald Trump might get to build his. Thomas, thank you for this. The CBC's Thomas Degla in London. Well, a rash of killings and worries about gun violence have triggered a novel response from civic leaders in Halifax. They have unanimously approved an unusual firearms amnesty program, but many of them are questioning their own effort. The CBC's Brett Ruskin has the details just ahead here on CBC News Network. Marriage is hard. Being married to Mrs. Kim is the hardest thing I ever do. Mm, what's hard? Nothing. 
being married. Hardest thing I ever do. That's what I say. Why you say that? You is not married to you. You is not married to you. Hi, I'm Andrea Bain, and I think good communication is so important. Life is unpredictable and beautiful and definitely worth talking about. So let's spend our afternoons together. Check us out this fall on The Goods. Tired of being pushed around by the big phone and cable companies? Then push back with Calmwave. With the Calmwave bundle, you get your home phone and unlimited internet for only $49.95 a month. I used to pay over 85 bucks a month. Now I get my phone and unlimited internet for almost half that price. Finally, awesome internet. That's right. Get your home phone and unlimited internet for only $49.95 a month. But that's not all. Call right now and we'll also give you six months of home phone service absolutely free. Wow. It was so easy to switch. They took care of everything. Join the hundreds of thousands of Canadians who've made the switch and save with Comwave. That's your home phone plus unlimited internet for only $49.95 a month. Plus, six months of home phone service absolutely free. Stop being pushed around by the big phone and cable companies and push back with Comwave. Call 1-866-355-4369. That's 1-866-355-4369. Call now. Anthony Insurance already delivers great home and auto insurance value across Newfoundland and Labrador. And for years, our public sector retirees have had access to special group savings and benefits. Today, thousands more retirees are eligible for group extras with membership in our Public Sector Pensioners Association. If you receive a retirement pension from any level of government, or if your career is with a large employer, such as a hospital, the university, or a major utility, then you may qualify for membership and extra savings up to 15%. To know that you're being insured and you're receiving good coverage and good service at a good rate feels pretty good. Association membership gives you exclusive discounts and extras with Anthony Insurance. It's well worth looking into and just a phone call or a click away. Retired or close to retirement? Call us or visit us online and start saving with Anthony Insurance. Looking for legendary quality combined with great value? We'll point you in the right direction. With limited supply and many 2016 models like the RAV4, there's no time to waste. Steer into the Toyota 2016 Clearout event today. At Rogers Bristow Moyes Personal Injury Law, we stand for experience. We stand for community. We stand for integrity. We stand for justice. Rogers Bristow Moyes Personal Injury Law, we stand for you. Well, people in Halifax who own guns can now trade them in for bus tickets. At least five out of nine homicides in the city this past spring involved firearms. And Halifax City Council is hoping this new trade-in program will help get some of those guns off the streets. The CBC's Brett Ruskin joins us now live from Halifax with details on this. So, Brett, what's the plan here to curb gun violence? Well, Michael, it was just yesterday here at Halifax City Hall that Halifax City Council voted unanimously in favor of this gun amnesty program. And as you mentioned, it has a bit of an interesting incentive. Uh, people in Halifax can bring in a gun, no questions asked, in exchange for 50 bus tickets. Uh, that has a value of around $100 in total. And so this is going to be launched over the next couple of weeks or so. As, as you said, there's just been a, a rash of violent uh, homicides over the last year. Nine homicides homicides over the past nine months, five of those coming as a result of gun-related violence. And so uh, while Halifax Regional Police are doing their part in investigating those crimes, Halifax City Council has stepped in as well to say that they want to try to get these guns off the streets and out of the hands of criminals. Michael. Now, has this program worked in other jurisdictions, Brett? It has, actually. It, it, they launched it here in the past in 2009. At that point, it was called Pixels for Pistols, and the trade was guns for digital cameras. Now, it's also been launched in Hamilton, Ontario, Toronto as well, Surrey, B.C. In, in B.C., in fact, they came up with and netted uh, hundreds of guns, including some interesting weaponry, including uh, a decades-old rocket launcher, as well as a military missile. So these gun amnesty programs have worked in the past, and now Halifax wants to see if it can't be used again here to try to reduce the rate of gun violence. Michael. Brett, thank you for this. The CBC's Brett Ruskin in Halifax. 
Well, a rare judicial review continues today in Calgary. It is looking into the conduct of Justice Robin Camp during a sexual assault trial while he was a provincial court judge in Alberta. Now, during that trial, he asked a sexual assault complainant why she did not keep her knees together. Camp is attending the hearing accompanied by members of his family. The alleged victim in the sexual assault trial has already made her appearance and she told the inquiry comments by Camp left her feeling dizzy and ill. She says she came to hate herself, even considered suicide. Camp's daughter, who says she too was raped, has submitted a letter to the hearing supporting her father. In that letter, she condemns his words but insists he is not a, quote, sexist brute. Well, Michael, in 90 minutes, Apple will be making some kind of announcement. And the betting is on the latest iPhone. That's based on leaks from suppliers, rampant speculation among iPhone fans, and one photo of a huge Taiwanese pop star. I'll explain later on CBC News Network. We all know that the cost of things not covered by most provincial health insurance plans keeps going up. The cost of prescription drugs, up. The cost of dental care, up. The cost of vision care, up. And if you or someone in your family has an accident or a serious illness, the costs could be really difficult to pay. Fortunately, Sure Health from Green Shield Canada protects you and your family from the many expenses not covered by your provincial health insurance plan. Everyday expenses, prescription drugs, dental and vision care and unexpected expenses physiotherapists chiropractors home care and much more with sure health your acceptance is guaranteed for most plans there's no health exam and no medical questions when you apply and sure health plans are affordable protect yourself and your family from runaway health costs with sure health from gsc call 1-844-475-SURE or visit us at surehealth.ca for your free brochure this is Jim. He's a proud hotel owner, but Jim is frustrated because his beautiful room is not being booked on his website. To cut his losses, he offers it on a popular travel website and a discount website for a reduced price. Why should you care? Because his room is now on three different websites for three different prices. But on Trivago, you find all of these prices on one site. That's how Trivago finds your ideal hotel for the best price. Hotel Trivago. For you, it's always leap over look, now over later, and pause, not even in your vocabulary. Whatever it is, you act on it. Same with Abriva. Why let a cold sore get in the way? Abriva soothes on contact and is clinically proven to shorten the healing time of your cold sore. Apply at the first tingle to get results faster. And because Abriva acts on it, you can too. Act on it with Abriva. I just wanna be okay, be okay, be okay. I just wanna be okay today. We can't create a world without accidents. I just wanna be okay, be okay, be okay. I just wanna be okay today. But we can certainly help you avoid them. Feel the day, feel the day. Automatic emergency braking with pedestrian detection on the new Hyundai Santa Fe XL. I just wanna be okay today. Rescue crews recover the bodies of two fishermen off the coast of Newfoundland. They are still looking for two others who went missing yesterday. The boat all four of them were on was discovered early this morning outside St. John's Harbor. Well, a camera woman who was seen on video kicking and tripping migrants near Hungary's Serbian border is facing charges today. Video of that incident surfaced online last year. Natasha Fata following the latest on this story. So charges in this case. Tell us about them, Natasha. Well, we're talking about Petra Laszlo, who up until September of last year was a camera woman with N1 Television. And then she subsequently lost her job and now is facing charges that have been brought forward by the federal prosecutor's office for disorderly conduct. Michael, I just want to remind folks at home about these powerful images that we talked about last year when they took place. Now, Petra is the one in the denim blue shirt here in the in the far end of the frame she's a camera woman she's with the police officers and what you're seeing here is a crowd of migrants that were on one side of the border the police were keeping them there then there was a breach there was a rush of the migrants coming into uh, Hungarian territory and there you see her 
kicking a young girl in the knee. And that's one of the reasons why they've brought forward these charges. She is also getting these charges because she kicked a man on camera in the shin. Both of these individuals fell. There's also criticism of her trying to kick another migrant who was carrying a small child in his arms. The police say she didn't actually make contact with the man, but in fact, he did end up falling, hurting himself and hurting the child he was carrying. Now, those who are coming to her defense have said that she was doing what the police were meant to be doing, which is to stop uh, these individuals. But certainly, the public didn't see it that way. The police don't see it that way. Her employer didn't see it that way because she lost her job. She had previously apologized for her actions and also said that she had been torn apart uh, in the press because she didn't mean to do what she did. She was just caught up in the moment and she regrets the error. But that doesn't matter. It's been a difficult year for her. We understand she has yet to comment on these uh, formal charges being laid from the prosecutor's office. We're waiting for any statement from her. And beyond that, Michael, all of this is taking place at a time where in the country on October 2nd, Hungary is going to be holding a referendum on whether to accept European Union-based quota systems for migrants. This is a hotly contested issue in many parts of Europe, as we've seen a flood of migrants and refugees coming to the countries uh, over the past year. And so many countries are pushing back and many say what Petra Laszlo did was just a symptom of that. Natasha, thank you. You're welcome. Well, here at home, it is day two of the trial into the deadly collapse of a mall in Elliott Lake, Ontario. Engineer Robert Wood has pleaded not guilty to criminal negligence. His defense team now says it has taken too long, 32 months, to bring the matter to trial. They are applying for a stay, but for now, the trial does continue. In fact, this morning, the court is hearing from the Ontario Provincial Police Officer about the destruction and chaos that first responders encountered. Maps and diagrams of the building are being used to describe the cave-in. Wood is the only person criminally charged in the 2012 collapse that killed two people. Well, the Apple hype machine started warning us days ago that today is the day in about 90 minutes it will unveil its latest Apple device. And based on leak information, that device is widely expected to be the latest iPhone. New bells, new whistles, but without a familiar feature. But of course, familiar to us is Jeannie Lee with more on this. So what are we right. expecting from Apple here? Well, unless it pulls a shocker, it really should be introducing the latest upgrade to the iPhone, Michael. And if it follows its usual naming convention, it'll be originally named, very originally, the iPhone 7, because that's what we're <laughs> up to now. And given that next year is the 10th anniversary of the iPhone, think about it, it's been around for nine years now, next year mm -hmm. will be 10. That's supposed to bring a massive revamp. So today, we should be be expecting some minor tweaks, relatively minor. And we have a photo to show you. It has a lot of street cred when it comes to what the new iPhone will look like. This guy, I don't know if you recognize him, but he is Jimmy Lin, a massive mm -hmm. Taiwanese pop star. And he's also famous for being a bit of a gadget geek. And he posted a picture of himself on social media. Look at that phone. You have to look a little closely, but anyone who has an iPhone will notice it right away. The back of the phone shows the dual camera system that is supposed to be in this latest version of the iPhone. And uh, Lin has done this before. Ever since 2012, he's posted casual pictures of himself holding the latest iPhone before it's even launched or mm -hmm. introduced and he hasn't been wrong yet and that's why some people are saying that's what it's going to be. So dual camera but as you say, missing a familiar feature because there's not going to be a, an, an ear jack? Or? Well, that's the thing. You see the way he was holding that. You couldn't yeah. tell if this um, device is going to have an ear jack or not, but that is the other talk to that it won't. So that when you open that uh, a box uh, with your new iPhone, you will not be getting a pair of earbuds for the first time in ever, really, right? <laughs> uh, and it's because Apple is uh, expected to be moving away from the um, thing that really made it very famous in the first mm -hmm. place. Remember those iPod commercials mm -hmm. uh, back in 2002 when that device was launched? All about the ear pods, the well, wires. The white wires exactly. gave you a certain status if you walked around with the white wires. Yeah, even if you didn't have anything attached to it, you <laughs> wanted to wear them, right? And so this is why this is going to be such a, a departure from the, that original model if it does happen as expected. But have a listen to this analyst who he points out just how controversial this move would be. Apple's gonna have to justify it. They're gonna have to show people why it's okay for them to ditch the headphone jack. And I think the big, the, the main key is gonna be whether or not they include some kind of plug that allows you to plug older headphones into it that use the typical jack that we all know. I think that will sort of relax a lot of people that are a little worried about it. 
am worried because it does mean that you would have to spend more money on uh, new accessories, etc., mm -hmm. especially if this is going to be a permanent uh, change. But you have to consider what else Apple has been up to lately. It bought Beats. Mm -hmm. and it already has some kind of a wireless earbud system there, so you see how the synergies work, at least for Apple, if not for the consumer. <laughs> <laughs> and markets before you go. All right, well, we have this kind of a picture today. The uh, Canadian dollar, we thought we'd start with that. The uh, Bank of Canada decided to leave interest rates alone and listed all kinds of reasons why it sees a bit of risk for the economy ahead. And right after that news, the dollar, which had been up, uh, went the other way and is now down about a quarter of a cent. West Texas oil just up marginally, stocks kind of flat to lower. Jamie, thank you. You're welcome. Well, the big television service providers have to offer a cheap service. It's known as Skinny Basic, but a lot of people are unhappy with how they are doing it. So now the broadcast regulator is investigating. And in just a minute or two, we're going to hear from someone who will appear at that CRTC hearing right here on CBC News Network. You're watching CBC News Network. Bad breath isn't sexy. Fresh breath is. The average Canadian visits about seven different websites before booking a hotel. I totally get that. We want to make sure that we get a great hotel for the best price. But why only seven when there are so many more out there? Next time, before you book, check on Trivago. Trivago compares live prices from more than 150 different websites to make sure that you find the best price for your ideal hotel. Hotel Trivago. Heartburn fast with Tums Chewies, the mouth-watering soft chew that provides fast heartburn relief. Tum, 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 tum. Chewies, only from Tums. The truth, courage, isn't that what you want? Or do you want compromise, moral cowardice? I'm trying to protect your family. Do you want them to know who you really are? If you want to make this much noise, you better not have any skeletons in your cupboard. Dangerous woman to be around. I don't want to go back to my past. Well, happening right now in Gatineau, Quebec, where representatives from the big television service providers are getting a grilling from the broadcast regulator. Now, since March, people have been able to order cheaper bundles from the companies, the so-called Skinny Basic TV. The CRTC is setting a maximum price of $25 a month, but there have been a lot of complaints about how the companies have set up their services. So the commission is now calling them to account. Well, our next guest says the companies, the complaints rather, don't surprise her because cable providers have been trying to make these skinny packages and unattractive as possible. And she plans to tell the commission that and more when she appears at the hearing tomorrow. Alicia Lau is legal counsel with the Public Interest Advocacy Center. She joins us now in Ottawa. Alicia, thank you for joining us. Uh, so take us through the issues that are being discussed today and through this whole inquiry about the skinny cable basic packages. Sure, so as uh, you just mentioned, the uh, new skinny basic packages is what we're calling them supposedly um, being offered to consumers for $25 or less, came in to the market in early March. However, the Commission um, and we had been hearing um, various complaints from consumers um, not being able to find information about the Skinny Basic packages when they're calling their service providers or feeling like um, their providers are trying to prevent them or deter them from switching um, by taking away bundling discounts or other promotional discounts or taking away services such as video on demand which most TV customers are used to seeing. So this hearing is really about the Commission asking the major TV providers how they're rolling out the Skinny Basic and why they're um, in some cases singling out Skinny Basic subscribers um, maybe perhaps um, trying to deter them from switching. Well, as we said, making it as unattractive as possible. And tomorrow you'll be speaking before the CRTC hearing. What are you planning to say? 
Uh, we're just going to raise some of the issues that we've come across. So uh, we did commission a poll and found that the majority of Canadians who did contact their provider to ask about the Skinny Basic were having trouble finding information about the channels included, the total cost, the additional charges. So making sure um, TV providers are upfront about uh, what consumers will be getting and are promoting the Skinny Basic and not trying to push customers towards their other packages, their other offerings, and also identifying some of the um, more concerning practices that we've seen, so taking away bundling discounts, taking away services such as free previews, pay-per-view, video on demand from Skinny Basic customers, and making sure that those practices aren't allowed. So, you know, we, we've been hearing the complaints, and I, I'm sure there are people out there that have wanted Skinny Basic but have not uh, accessed it or because it's been so unattractive they haven't chosen that option. And now they're hearing about these hearings. Realistically, what do you think will come from these hearings? Well, hopefully the Commission will send a signal to the major TV providers that they are watching them and they're watching the way that they're rolling out these new packages and then the new pick and pay options, which will be fully in place in December. And that if um, they are treating, uh, the providers are treating customers, skinny basic customers unfairly or they're um, making the offering so unattractive that in the end customers can't switch to them or they feel like they're being held hostage, that the Commission might be able to impose new rules or new uh, restrictions to ensure that the providers are respecting the goals of this policy, which was to give consumers more choice, more flexibility, a little bit more affordability. Well, and we're running out of time here, but quickly I have to ask you, what advice mm -hmm. would you give consumers when thinking about switching to skinny cable? Well, make sure that you're asking the right questions. Um, sure, it's supposed to be $25, but what kind of additional charges will there be? What might you lose? And um, try to negotiate with your provider. So um, tell them this is what you're subscribed to. Is there any way to keep certain things? There might, there might be some flexibility um, in, that, in those areas, but it's really to ask the right questions and make sure that your provider is clear about what Skinny Basic entails and what you would be getting into and what consumers would be getting. Alicia, thank you for this. Alicia Lau, Legal Counsel with the Public Interest Advocacy Center, speaking to us from Ottawa. Thanks, Michael. Well, the long list of finalists for Canada's biggest book prize has just been announced. There are 12 titles in the running for the Scotiabank Giller Prize, including these ones. David Bergen is up for his novel, Stranger. He won the Giller seven years ago for the time in between. Madeleine Tian is nominated for Do Not Say We Have Nothing. The book is also up for the Man Booker Prize. And Emma Donahoe made the cut for her latest novel called The Wonder. She also wrote the novel Room, which was made into an Oscar-winning movie. Now, the list will be narrowed down to a short list later this month, and then the big winner will be announced November the 7th in a ceremony that will be broadcast on CBC Television. The prize is worth $100,000. Meanwhile, Bruce Springsteen has just revealed details of his long battle with clinical depression. Of course, that's the boss with his 1975 classic, Born to Run. Springsteen says he first saw a psychotherapist more than 30 years ago, but has recently suffered a severe bout of depression. One, he says, left him crushed. In his upcoming autobiography, he reveals that his struggle occurred at the time of his 2012 album, Wrecking Ball, which includes the song, This Depression. That autobiography, also called Born to Run, comes out at the end of the month. Well, we have some news here regarding a big name in golf. Tiger Woods just making an announcement. Rob Pizzo is here with details. So what is Tiger Woods saying here? Well, it's been just over a year since we've seen him swing a competitive golf club in, uh, in the PG on the PGA Tour. And, you know, we've seen him release a lot of statements over the last year saying not there yet, not there yet. Of course, he had a couple of back surgeries, and that's what he's recuperating from this morning. It's a little bit different because on his website, TigerWoods.com, he did say that he is planning and hoping to be back 
next month. Michael, he even listed some of the tournaments he wants to play in, a couple in October, one in November, one in December, and he wants to play in the Safeway Open, which begins on October 13th, and that's the first event of the year. So obviously, he wants to come back as soon as possible. He also released this statement saying, quote, my rehabilitation is to the point where I'm comfortable making plans, but I still have work to do. Whether I can play depends on my progress and recovery. My hope is to have my game ready to go. So it's not a 100% uh, fact that he is coming back, but he's certainly planning on doing it. And like I said, it's been over a year, so a lot of mm -hmm. people want to know how has that recovery been, been going along. He's a 14-time major, but major winner, but... He's 40 years old, and two back surgeries, uh, you know, can take your toll on someone, especially when you're playing golf. Your back has a little bit uh, of something to do with it. But then again, he's Tiger Woods, Michael. I will never bet against Tiger Woods, and he could win any tournament that he plays in. So I, for one, cannot wait for the Safeway Open. I can't believe I just said that sentence. I've never <laughs> said that before in, in my life, but I can't wait to see just how much he's recuperated. Yeah, well, you know, and so much pressure, because you're talking about the back surgery and all that, the back injury, but the mental game. Sure. Is, is, is got to play. It's so much pressure on him. He has rushed back from injuries in the past, and we've seen him do that and then have to leave again. This time, he took his time. He had no rush. He took over a year, and hopefully he'll be uh, back to hopefully at least challenging for, for golf tournaments. Okay, so that is potentially in October. Uh, but we also have to talk about uh, last night's game with the Jays. Uh, we do. They were taking on the Yankees in a real back-and-forth game. By the time we got to the ninth inning, well, they'd already changed the lead five times. So that's where we're going to pick it up. Jays down 7-4. to four. Edwin Incarnacion, tough to hit the ball. When the catcher's glove gets in the way, but the umpire didn't see it, so the at-back continued. And on the 10th pitch, Encarnacion beats out the throw to first, so a run scores, and it's 7-5. to five. Then it's bases loaded for Melvin Upton. He ends up touching first base. Dellen Batances does not, so it's 7-6. to six. Last chance, Justin Smoke up. Bases loaded, two out, and he sends this one a long way to left, unfortunately. Just not long enough as Brett Gartner makes a pretty nice catch to end the rally and the game. New York wins it 7-6. to six. That's the bad news. More bad news. Red Sox won, so they're now tied with, J with the Jays for first place in the AL East. And the Orioles won't go away either. They're a game back of both of those teams. So it is a logjam atop the AL East. So you're ending this hit with bad news. I had to end it with some bad news. I've got to give people the <laughs> updates on the standings. I don't make the bad news. The Jays and the Orioles and the Red Sox do. Okay, don't, don't play the messenger, right, Rob? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. This sports update is brought to you by Pinty's Pub and Grill. Making great food fun. The show jumping season draws to a close at Spruce Meadows with two big ticket events. First, the top riders in the world compete for the Suncor Cup. Then it's country versus country with the National, starting Saturday at 4 on CBC. As a Canadian travel agency with deep roots in China, Cinerama is the premier choice for all-inclusive vacations in Asia's most breathtaking country. Join over 100,000 Canadians who have trusted Cinerama to organize their dream vacation and enjoy traveling through China in total comfort. Packages start at $1,999, including hotels, cruises, and five-star services for a lifetime of memories. Now it's your turn. Book your trip today at Cinerama.ca. If you're taking prescription medications, does your mouth often feel dry? A dry mouth can cause cavities and bad breath. Did you know over 400 medications can cause a dry mouth? That's why there's Biotin. Biotin can provide moisturizing relief. And the toothpaste helps fight cavities. Remember, while your medication is doing you good, a dry mouth isn't. Biotin, for people who suffer from dry mouth. Seniors are piling on debt faster than any other group. Those over 55 are carrying more debt into retirement than ever before. 
Over time, your financial problems can even disrupt your sleep, harm your health, personal life, giving you that ever-sinking feeling. Pull the plug on your financial stress. Let one of our certified counselors guide you to a brighter financial future. Credit Counseling Services of Atlantic Canada. Call us today for a solution that works. My name is Leanna Rowe and I'm a registered nurse. Well, I was born profoundly deaf. Paul gave me the confidence to kind of learn how to communicate with people. He was my teacher, he was my advocate, he was my mentor, he was my best friend. Like, he really was a big part of my life. Paul! Leanna! Thank you so much for everything that you've done for me. Oh, Leanna. <laughs> the sweet of you to recognize it. <laughs> Thursday on First Hand. A very destructive lifestyle is being glorified. All the pressures that women kind of feel about image. Oh, shut, shut, shut. The volume's turned down on it when you're drinking. Girls Night Out, Thursday at 9 on First Hand. Well, these days, René Levesque Boulevard is one of Montreal's busiest streets, but a long time ago, it was where many paid tribute to the dead. Some Hydro-Quebec workers found more than what they bargained for when they unearthed 200-year-old human remains. The CBC's Emily Brass has the story. Archaeologists thought they might find bones here. We've identified old maps that show uh, that there was a Protestant cemetery here between 1799 and 1854 and transform into a park. Hydro-Quebec was putting in a new underground power line and sent archaeologists in first. The trench has already been paved over, but when the asphalt was removed... Uh, maybe 40 centimeters uh, underneath that, we were seeing the top of the graves. The remains of about 40 people were found, including a child's. Two skeletons were intact. We always talk about, well, you see, we have uh, clay pipes, uh, we have bottles and stuff like that. But when you, you fall on a, on a, a body, it it's kind of uh, makes it a little bit more uh, personal. And while the area is now a bustling part of the downtown core, the discovery takes us back to the 19th century, when the Faubourg Saint Laurent suburb was just being developed. So there were a, a few buildings around uh, Dorchester Street at that time. Mostly just, just housing and, and, and small shops. We tried to imagine how it would be, uh, but uh, time machine hasn't been invented yet. They do know this is where some important Montrealers were buried. Scottish people, the merchants uh, that, that were very influential. Just like James McGill was buried here before they moved to uh, university campus. But not everyone laid to rest here was well to do. It's everybody's uh, destiny, I guess. Archaeologists will study the finds. Emily Brass, CBC News, Montreal. Well, from Montreal to Toronto right now, a live look at the city, and it is a scorcher today. A heat warning remains in place across southern Ontario. In fact, Environment Canada says the region can expect temperatures in the low 30s, but it will feel like the low 40s thanks to humidity. A gradual cooling is expected to begin tomorrow. Authorities say the elderly, infants and people with chronic illnesses are at greatest risk of heat-related illness. Well, the heat is truly on for Toronto's mayor as well. John Tory accepting a challenge from a fed-up subway rider. It was very, very crowded, standing room only. Lots of people sort of looking wilted and fanning themselves. We will do better uh, next year and going forward. Transit activist Bianca Spence said Tory should ride on Toronto's Line 2. It has older cars and many do not have working air conditioning. In fact, by rush hour this morning, the temperature had already hit 30 degrees. Commuters and city staff have long agreed that the subway is overcrowded during peak times, but many commuters say the lack of air conditioning can make that ride absolutely unbearable. Well, with a look at what's in store for weather across the country, let's go to Suzanne Leonard at the Weather Network now. Suzanne. Could be more record temperatures today in eastern Canada. Watching a slowly advancing low and some unsettled weather for the west. And more of that, unfortunately, in the long-range forecast. Now, the satellite and radar, here's a snapshot over a period of a few hours a little earlier today. And there's that cloud cover and the unsettled weather drifting up through the Great Lakes and one of several troughs of low pressure coming across the prairie provinces. Hot and sticky across all of eastern Canada. Temperatures up and down in the prairies. Risk of storms continuing. Some 
early day storms in southern Saskatchewan, southern BC. Wetter weather coming later today and later in the forecast, the remnants of what was Hurricane Lester. Headed towards the north coast of BC. Now what's significant here, although most of the precipitation in the long range will be in the north, notice the isobar lines multiplying. The low is really intensifying. Typical of fall storms and that will end up being a northwest wind for Alberta with temperatures up and down right through the week and the weekend. Here's this afternoon. Notice the clear skies, mainly sunny. Edmonton zero at the International Airport this morning. Cold start, big cool down for Calgary, up and down Vancouver. We'll see a sunnier day on Thursday. But these temperatures in stark contrast to eastern Canada, where it is going to be hot this afternoon. It is going to be humid on top of that. We do have the chance of thunderstorms pressing south, along with a low that could bring some big downpours later in the day all through the lower Great Lakes. That's your forecast. Well, as we say thank you to Suzanne Leonard, let's now bring you to Rio de Janeiro. The Paralympic Games open tonight. And of course, the Canadian flag bearer will be wheelchair basketball player David Eng, who will lead Canada's team of 162 athletes into the Maracanã Stadium. You can watch our live coverage of the Paralympic opening ceremony 6.30 Eastern Time on CBC TV and online as well. You're watching CBC News Network. Welcome to Fox's Hotel, training young people with special needs in the art of hospitality and so much more. Special Needs Hotel, Thursday at 8 on CBC.